it's going to obviously look to emulate this little cost. Do you feel now that there might be some eyes turned towards this partner that they're picking up? Not not first base Ben, right? I'm not talking like that early on, but just a little bit of consideration as to what they could yeah, uh, I, do with it. Again. I could potentially see them banning out like Bloodseeker, considering that gaming gladiators do have first pick in this one, and then go mm -hmm. for Pango. As an opener, Ten I think that's seconds. a potential thing that they could do. I mean, this is only game one, gaming gladiators. Uh, even though they're not gaming gladiators, up behind uh, Team Secret, who are in the lead right now. Both teams, they've got some answers going in here and there against each other and having that team synergy. But here, I think there's something that is still unanswered. Side of these teams that has can completely go off check. Oh, maybe the Konka. That might be the one thing. This is a hero that I don't have a lot of faith in generally from the last patch. However, we did see it in the NADPC recently. It's go kind of ham, and I wasn't expecting that. It is known for its laning prowess. It has some good team fighting available with it as well. You can control the map. I think the mag response to Deuce is always good. A very easy skewer target backwards to isolate. You do have the power to allow the Slark to farm pretty quickly here. So yet again, I think Secret has a pretty good draft. Yeah, but so does Gaming Gladiators heroes. on the other hand. Three heroes that benefit from the Empower too. So uh, Secret, they have many various ways uh, to find farm, find efficiency throughout the map. A little bit of a net worth lead above Gaming Gladiators. But I do like the point that uh, the analyst brought up, which is the fact that the Gladiators have to start game two in the same way counting. they play one. It is Quinn with the supports, looking for kills, hunting, getting that bit of a snowball going your way, enabling Quinn's yeah, game now. and being your that threat. Uh, he was very dangerous with that Storm Spirit, mainly thanks to always having those action runes at his, at his uh, disposal. But you also want to bring in these ports. You've got this bounty hunter. Build up a lot of money with those track kills. That benefits Quinn even more. And it allows this Beastmaster to ramp up faster into the game. Hence leading on to the Medusa. It's a domino effect that gaming gladiators want to build off of. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a similar gameplay for Team Secret as far as their heroes go. It's going to be a little slower, actually, than last game for Team Secret. But on gaming gladiators, and they're going to play much faster. Swapping in this bounty hunter instead of a silencer along with the techies gives you a lot more aggressive potential here to make things happen on the map And secrets can be playing slower naturally because they do have the Magnus. They do have a Slark Generally these heroes are a bit slower than their counterparts of last This or watch it the, the listen in part I mean, It was very hectic comms coming So just looking at a bit of these uh, statistical differences between the two teams it is, in fact, uh, gaming gladiators who have more calm and collective, more of, like, smaller infants, just what you need to know, basically. They also have the lowest map pings and map drawings ever out of the entire division. While Team Secret, they talk a lot, they pick a lot, second highest, 279 up uh, in the course of this series. <laughs> One, uh, well, one of the only room he has was the illusion room. Oh, what a really well played by so They get both this and rice. But if it comes with his uh, life, that is totally worth for gaming gladiators. Eludes me. Extra experience flowing in the favor of their supports. It is that physical damage on the side of secret. Is under attack. Rotated in, actually. Yeah, South Celery, here comes Ace, and comes Quinn, double kill this Armel kill, he's got the rump buff, and they will finish off Celery, it's just a matter of moments, it is going to be Puppy and Crystalis to kill him off. Now turning him down onto Quinn, Goku trying to get some back up, slowing them down. There's another Astral Step available, so that is Secret. Dyer's top Come out with a kill from there. Danger. Yeah, ended up punishing the bounty hunter, both teams brought four heroes, and Boom and... Miracho are just gonna be arming it up. Boom having a pretty good game, but Dusa having a better. Miracho, he's gonna be that Dusa in this particular game, looking to get to that point where he's completely unkillable, but you do have answers against Medusa. The Slark going into the Fusal Blade, also with the Essence Shift, stealing away stats. Pretty good hero to play against Medusa here, but as long as the net worth doesn't get out of control here, but so good so far. 
definitely the supports now playing around Quinn. All oh, three heroes basically be stacked up here. Yamich, or Melon. Just when it gets on the bottom half, and Quinn's gonna take it. So here's a double astral step to uh, yeet that one right in front of Armel's face. He strewn pick for him. Pretty scary rune as well for this Void Spirit to have. Luckily, he did use the double step attack. there, so he won't be able to use it for a little bit of time, which will give Secret some chances here to. Yeah, I mean, mines and blast off, you can get close, but. You know, he's not. Celery gonna get up on the hunt, and Ace gonna get the push the way, just forces the Slark back into the jungle. Quinn's got a Yamich in mid, and he will get this one. One kill for himself, and that's gonna be Quinn's first kill, too. Dyer's what low dark pack already used has to pounce away. Was holding up quite a long, long time. Dyer should look to their top top. Yeah, we got some stacking look, look, going look on. Look at Duraccio's CS, by the way. He's already averaging 10 CS per minute. 114 at 11 minutes. Attack. That's actually nuts. Like. Completely free farm uncontested, but that pace is sick. Yeah, no, he is definitely farming really good, doing the easiest build possible, maxing both the split shot and the mystic snake, not even going for a point on the ultimate, having lower points in the mana shield, and just wants to farm, and he's doing a really good job at it. So it's definitely super scary. Now the bounty hunter and the pest hero finally spotted, maybe let down to his death as well. For him and finish him off with a shadow poison. Just ran out of him as he escaped under the tower vision. So, My path luckily, low enough for shadow poison to be enough for the kill. And guess what, Rune Quinn just got again. A oh, DD rune. rune. However, yeah. you do have. Speak at you, <laughs> Maybe you do have shadow demon this game. Maybe this is the adjustment they made. You can just purge off all the runes here. As they're going to make a smoke gank play. But what is on cooldown? See where they want to go with this. I do like Armel's build going into that Evans Halberd here. Try and disarm the Medusa later on in the game. Ace is right nearby. This, this man's tanky. He's got a Vanguard and Overcook. He's being up against four though. Gotta buy some time to show off. Last one is still not enough for a kill. He's just blowing all the mines. Crystal at the super low. Quinn comes in for the snipe. And he's gonna take the Slark away. So it is a two for one trade off, but that is your carry down. One carry still hitting creeps on the other side of the map. Yeah, his build really helps him get that return kill. If he went for the traditional Helm of the Overlord build, he probably wouldn't have it by now, but he'd just have a Dominator. He would have died easy peasy there, but they had to spend so much that they could just make that turnaround kill and kill Crystallis, which he's not too happy about for sure. Because every death that you have on this Slark, you're going to feel further and further behind this Medusa here, who is completely unanswered you have your yep. manta style online going for a butterfly now he's gonna let him get some lotuses too he's got a greater healing lotus as yamage goes down in the mid lane uh center is also making his way towards the middle he's gonna be around already being pulled out so he's going to jump on the side as wins fighting against three separate heroes with no way to escape this void spirit seems to be going down he needs three more seconds but it's not going to be enough time for him no dust bomb. Oh, they got him. They got him. Sentry. Every action from Yamich. Instant sentry. Lead to the disruption. So these are definitely helping. These kills are much needed. Doing a really good job by Team Secret here. But still, you're getting massively outfarmed by those Medusa. I still think this grading healing Lotus, he's gonna get one more of those Lotus on him, and then it's gonna be the 900 mana, 900 HP Lotus, which is pretty. We're getting quite close to that. This is, this is an early game Medusa battle. She's gonna have to spend mid lane. Oh, for that RP opportunity, they're stacked up for it. Last one, not actually used at all. RP finally connected well to Ace. This is tanky. So it's not back up. Crack kills and here comes Quinn. The big power battery, the big damage comes in and takes down the man. But Armel's coming in the back as well. Catching this. Oh, blown up by the magical damage. He wants a piece of this action too, so the Medusa. Part of this game. 
in this game. He's trying to catch the uh, disruption, gets him and Lucia's going his way, but he's going to be caught as well by Quinn. Tracking the guy as well, they will see where he is and force him out. So even if they're making space for this tower to drop, Secret's still feeling a bit iffy about can we still engage or not. They're so low, so they will have to let that tower fall. Gaming left. Well, maybe not Medusa quite yet. Just how far the farm this deuce is. If not now, win. Just call the question. Now kind of the bottom lane. RML gonna have to strike the out. Can he get out of time? It's Celerine to walk in between. But Quinn actually has the first to take him out. Looks like a Shadow Walk gonna potentially connect that at the same time. He cancel that GP, but Quinn finishes. Gets the finish kill. Big one as well, killing that Kunk for the first time in this game. Much different game here. At least for now, net worth wise, in game number one here. Arachio still hasn't really. He has had one participation so far, and that was the mid lane there, but other than that, it's been 17 minutes here. He's got a man down, nearly a complete butterfly as the armor goes down. The whole map pretty much places. just belongs to Gaming Glad. <laughs> The fact that uh, Secret, like their lineup this game, the last one just doesn't allow them to have the same type of dance ball. They need more time. That's what gets us out of it. And we'll find these kickoffs on supports. There's always something that we will welcome with open arms. Step live, still, now. see like uh, how different this game is under is compared to the last one, where Garaccio just keeps on farming, but they're not really losing any control. It looked like it a bit. A lot of spells used for uh gladiators to back away. Oh, they come through as well. They're gonna get caught by the red and no steal for him has an RP. But just needs the backup of his machine to get the benefit out of it. So he's trying to walk out against the RP option too. Crystal's diving in as well. Just very low at HP. They come to Torn on a two. Might be able to take out Celery. And also going to very low at HP. But Quinn will find against Darnell. Back to the He's trying to make a rush for it. But he has that Aegis. And he will respawn. Shroud. We're a bit of a water park theme here, but uh, so Ace and Ace are the ones. Armel was sniping by Quinn at the same time, but now again, is this round number two? I don't think so, or is it? Boom's gonna get some in regeneration and healing out from Puffy. Puffy could just sack his life. Well now, Boo Boo gets out. Harpoon, Harpy gets the celery down on her own behind her, and he will definitely lose his life. So good plays coming out from Secret. Saving their Magnus is Puffy. Big plays. This is what they did in game number one, and this is what they're trying to do here in game number two as well. Pick these defensive supports, try to save your cores. We're seeing the Pugna yet again with the Decrepify, into the life drain, keeping Boom just alive. But at the end of the day, that was a defensive reaction made just to kill Celery. So, the Empires, they're okay with Step lively now. Your Ideally, they get that kill there, for sure. That's, that was their plan. But they're putting themselves in a position where, regardless of the result of what happens there, it's still aggression for them, and it's still a net win. Or do we need one more item? One out of Syndrome. <laughs> just one more. Just one more, guys. I'm not gonna get caught by Quinn. Missing out on the sticky bomb, but the blast off hitting on the back line onto Armel. So fucky. That's an ideal target right there. We want to kill if you're on gaming gladiator, see supports. They were unable to do that in game number one. They were just able to keep every single core alive. It's not to be as extreme in this game, but I feel like the defensive capability is a little less. However, you are playing Void Spirit this game. This hero is a bit better than Storm Spirit at assassinating these heroes like Pugna and a Shadow Demon. Yeah. So as long as Quinn can get these jumps in on the supports, the fights could be good. 1400 HP shield room as well, so uh... Not to run into the shield. They want to play more of a scrappy game. These pickoffs here. Let's go through this spot. It's a hard move for it just in case, but uh... As well, stone gaze used by Dorachi. Okay, this is actually pretty good for a secret. It's not just a kill, but it's a big ult to use. Medusa on the run, and 
smoke. They're gonna be cancelled up as well. Five seconds from the count. Yeah. over Crystalis. He caught it in this target. Hit by the deal. So we'll take that to sit down on the ground. So where can he go? What can you do? Where did you go? Into the graveyard. You shall return. And Lorazio actually. First death of the game. So a massive kill for Secret. One into an ulti. Into the keep down. Into the tower falling in mid. Just what Secret were wanting. He has 1,500 mana, which is not a lot, and he's got less than 500 to take the game. He chose to go for the aggressive route. All the illusions drop to the high ground. He's still a spot for himself. Wide alone here, he's going to start building up some stacks, both flying in onto eight. Took the life great. That's an RP used just to make sure. And there's actually a bolt in the next cell already on the side, but he's able to dodge it. RP for a core kill, the cost of a support. <laughs> Just stack for himself, so Sark very happy with this trade-off. There's your uh, first proper defensive item on top of the Manta for the Medusa. That's brought up for Caraccio. This is a very interesting item build from Caraccio. He's relying a lot on this evasion from the Butterfly. But more than anything, this butterfly, unless you get lucky with the proc, the beautiful start for fun. It all starts off with Armel getting caught in mid. They can't get there in time to back him up. They've been saving boom over and over again with Puffy, with Yamich been around. But this time Armel falls, the supports die, and suddenly an enemy is inside your base. Just lost two lanes of racks. That's a 16,000 gold team fight, by the way. It was a big one. Do you think the deuces across the map from a lone hero. There's another lone hero in the area. It's go through, but it goes the other way around. Spot. He's trying to channel that teleport. Not gonna happen. We got the gym. They let him cook. And again, Goku and Quinn making the big plays on the map here. I guess Celery it, it, as well. It, it really has nice. been just Quinn at the supports. Pretty much. And Ace has been doing what he should be doing. He's taking it to the first Oh, yeah. Maybe there. He gave me a stone case. Oh, he's up for Mel. Close enough for an X mark. So following up, Boom coming in with that skewer, trying to close in the distance of the blink available. He spotted the enemy just a slow shot. He's under the balance. He's coming in as well. He's got the ult to pull the Magnus into the air. He's still trying to run away. He's going to get caught by the boat. Not actually caught by the boat, but caught by just the other control Secret has. So they will get Tofu. It's all about to get him. Good disengage from uh, Gaming Gladiators. They want Roche. That was a buyback from Chrysalis. They need to get this Roche on. Chrysalis, no buyback available. Into this fight, the Hawk does see this. Gaming Gladiators are gonna stick around. Must have. They're already coming without the smoke. So he's got a BKB available. So it's, go not, it's, not be, it's not gonna be fast enough. It's not gonna be fast enough. <laughs> Here onto the middle, Start the fast up by Roshan. Oh, 